Do you have any thoughts on the sign, man? Speak against him. He was you're, 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 you're looking at it. What do you think of the woman who was caught in adultery? What's your mission what for having his, this out here? His response these signs? Or, or, well, because this is a, a school that professes to be Christian, right? Christian school. One, I can't tell it's a Christian school because of all the worldly behavior, but but we put these signs on campus to show the bloody city her abominations, as, as God says in Ezekiel 22, verse 2, and hope, um, hoping that, you know, even one person will have compassion, like, because of all people that should care about their neighbors being murdered, tortured, harmed, afflicted, it should be Christians. So what better place to have the images of America's Holocaust, baby murder, on a, Christ, on a Christian campus, or, you know, right on the sidewalk right there on a Christian campus, like, yeah, to, to proclaim the word of God, and which um, God has some very strong words to say about child sacrifice, and we proclaim that. Um, I, I will disagree with you on that. Oh. Well, we go everywhere. I go all over the place. Um, but I, I can tell you from my observation, I'd say 90% of the people here are lost in their sins. I would, I'd say probably um, their behavior, their, they, because if I go to the local mall, Walmart, or the bar, I'd see the same behavior because I've, I've preached to those places and I, seen, I see the same behavior. Sometimes I see less wickedness in the world going to preach in the, at the bars or even outside strip clubs you know than I do at a Christian school, yes, this Christian school here. It comes from a heart that hates God. Well, you shouldn't be if you're a Christian. You should be have self-control. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit, self-control. Patience. You and I are not promised another power when it comes to the health care this is murder man this is this is murder don't call murder health care please especially if you trust to be a christian do you yeah. well wait wait you said this is a christian campus right so shouldn't they appreciate us talking about god what god says about matters of life i know that most of them are not i say they've told me what? Oh, pardon me? What? Well, well, I'm professed to be Christians. Okay, but do you understand where I'm coming from? Where, you know, when all you're talking about, about these issues is just God and how it involves God. When there's so many people that don't even really acknowledge God, you know, their own choice. Do you see how it's kind of hard to get that point across of what you're trying to actually communicate? Because all people here, when they see these signs, well, it should have, if they're truly Christians or even say they're Christians, it should evoke grief and compassion for murdered babies. Well, you, you, you just said 90% of the people here say say they're Christians, right? Right? No, I reach out to people, Christians or not Christians. I, I do this all the time, everywhere, all, all, all over the place. Sometimes the pagans show more compassion than the Christians do, the professing Christians. Someone who's not Christian, you know, in a less aggressive way. I do that too. Yeah. Right. Uh, but, but I'm just. Um, we show this on a, on, a, on a supposedly Christian campus. I'd say this is a secular campus because the behavior is, is filthy here. It's very worldly. The people here are very worldly. Well, there's. Um, of the world, they're not of the. They're, they're of the Father, the devil, not, they're not of Jesus Christ. Well, let, 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 let me explain. Because. Today we had a guy that said, "Hail Satan." Had a woman the other day, our first day here, that that said she was an atheist and believed in God, didn't believe in hell. Mm -hmm. We've had several homosexuals walk by us and proudly proclaim, "I'm homosexual. I'm gay." I'm homosexual. You are. Yeah. Well, do you know what the Bible says about that? Uh, did you know that it's actually a lost translation from the original context? Which which passage are you talking about? Well, if you look at all the manuscripts, I because it Romans chapter one, 
and not just Romans chapter one, First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine, homosexuals, they're in that, they're not just homosexuals, but they're in that group, the sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God. You choose sin. Just like a heterosexual can, can choose to, can choose to, a guy can choose to lust after a woman who, who's, who's, um, who, uh, who's a heterosexual, and that's, and that's sinful as well. It's not just homosexuals, but I mean, I say homosexuals because there's a lot of them on this campus. You just said you're one. And I'll just tell you that, that you cannot be a Christian and live for sin and, and love sin. I'm not saying it's sinful to have desires because I have, I have, I have, sin, or to have temptation. I, I deal with temptation a lot, but, it, but I fight it and I rebuke it and I, I, I use God's word to combat it. And, but if you live in it, if you love it and you're not convicted by it, well, Christians don't live in sin because Romans chapter six, please, please hear me. Romans chapter six, God says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin can still live in it? Later on in Romans chapter six, the Lord Jesus Christ says, even so consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And the, the whole chapter about being a slave to sin versus being a slave to righteousness, a slave to Jesus Christ. And so um, I don't know like if, if you're living in homosexual sin, you said you're homosexual, so I don't know if that means you have a, you're sleeping with a woman. If so, then you're living in sin, and the Bible says that it, we're not living in sin. The Christians, we're not living in sin. What's that? No. No, we're not. Constantly. I'm not saying we don't sin. That Alan and I don't sin. I'm saying we don't live in it. We don't love it like we, like we did before God saved us. And pardon me. Yeah, we, we we don't we don't we're not comfortable in our sin. That just as God says in Hebrews chapter 12, God says, "Those whom I love, I chasten." I chastise. He disciplines his children. And if someone says they're a Christian, thinks they're saved, they're a Christian, and yet they can live in sin and God never chastises them, that's evidence that God has not saved them, that they're not born again. Right. So are you just openly judging people because they are openly homosexual? It's not just homosexuals. Okay, so you are openly, but you understand that, again, coming back to my point with Rich, like, you know, if you truly, if you truly want to read the Bible, you want to have, like, have a conversation. Like, <laughs> like right now? Well, we're having a conversation. Yes, but not everybody, I mean, as you've said, is as calm. You know what? You'd say Jesus loves you. You know, stuff going on. I feel like it would just be easier, just genuinely, if, you know, I mean, God commands all men. You know, I mean, I mean, I get all the time. Well, I understand a lot of people don't like the street preaching, they, they don't like these signs. Right. I mean, well, I don't like, like these like signs, but... Expecting a reaction, I mean, well, I... I mean, I don't find them really disturbing. Um, that's the problem, honestly. That's the problem. We just don't and are you care. Concerned about, um, you know, after babies born, the adoption process? Yeah, and yeah I hope to adopt if the Lord... If the Lord blesses me the family, I hope to adopt children. Right, but do you understand how corrupt and broken that system is? I know it's pretty bad. Yeah. We don't murder people to try and solve those problems, though. We don't do this to children to solve. Like, that murder doesn't solve problems, right? I don't want murder. But at the same time, you only care about the fetus. Baby. Well, how do you know that, ma'am? You've been talking to me for what ten minutes. How do you know that? Well, you're judging me right now. Because you're making a, you're, you're making a false accusation because you don't know Everything without knowing me. I hear is all about pro life. Actually, I'm not pro life. I'm an abolitionist, and I've talked. Okay, well, well, it sounds well, it sounds like you, I mean, you said you, right? Okay, just be careful, like, because you don't know, like, who we. Right. No, yeah. That. And I'm not just talking about homosexuals. I, I don't know if I said this to you, but I was uh, t telling this gentleman about I've seen women out here with their breasts hanging out. We've had uh, a guy said he some modesty, and, and God condemns some modesty. You know, women should dress um, in a way that pleases God if they're saved. Not automatically be looking at if she's covered up, if her breasts are out. We're not automatically looking, but I mean, when a woman's. That is your impure mind. No. That is your impure mind. No, it's her dressing like. Who's making you look at that? 
one. No one accepts Well, I mean, she's got displayed right there walking in front of a guy. I mean, and a guy's eyes typically, you know, they're you don't, not even trying to look at it. That is not the woman's fault. That is not the woman's fault. The man cannot help. Do they teach at this campus? That's saying that guys are just disrespectful. It says that the the women have not been taught right how to dress modestly by the faculty, maybe the parents. But I mean, yeah, that that's that's different. It's the problem isn't just homosexuality. It's the problem is not just that we're, babies are being murdered and almost nobody on this campus cares. There's a few people that seem to care. The problem is sin. It's sin is is why um, you're you're embracing homosexuality. I'm not sure to what extent you have really told me. The sin is why there's other homosexual there's baby murderers on this campus. Why there's fornicators, probably drunkards. It's. I mean, we don't. We're not here to con. Like, a Christ, a Christian college campus. No. Not not a secular campus where you expect that a Christian campus where they should have a code of ethics, right? Well, you're saying age range of kids, you know, and a lot of people here are here on Catholic scholarships. I'm here because my mom works here, so I get free tuition. If not, I wouldn't be here. You know? What does your mom think about you being a homo uh, homosexual? She's very openly accepted because she understands. She says she's a Christian. Yes. Whoa. Oh, cool here. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling, I'm asking questions. Right, yeah, but can you let me finish? Okay, sorry, go ahead. Thank go ahead. You, um, you know, uh, she is openly Christian. She always has been. I was raised by that. Um, but, you know, she understands and loves me for who I am. And she takes that. And she is not going to be judging her daughter just because she is not living the same lifestyle that she grew up in. And that is that close mindedness that I see in a lot of Christians today. Is the second that they hear or see something that, that does not agree with what they have grown up in, they automatically turn it away, they push it away, they don't even want to have an open discussion about it. It is an automatic, okay, that's wrong, no, which is very close-minded and it's frustrating because there are so many religions, you know, and it is great that you have your own religion, it's great I have my own religion. That's the freedom of it. That's the beauty of it. You know, we're all able to coexist, or should be able to coexist, with our own beliefs, with our own freedom to express those beliefs however we feel fit, right? So. No, I'm not right. May I respond to what you're saying? Are you? Okay, yeah. Because I have, I, I don't want to interrupt you. Just you're, you're bringing up a lot of things. I want to address them. One, we're not to coexist. Christians do not coexist with sin. They, they bring, the, they bring the gospel into conflict with sin, and not to affirm sin. And I don't want to speak ill of your mom. I don't know her, but I will say it's not loving for a Christian. A Christian does not affirm sin. They rebuke sin. They confront sin lovingly with the Bible, with us. Yeah, actually, they do. The the righteous man judges all things. Christians do. And Jesus Christ, you yes. To a righteous man. The the right the, the the Bible talks about the righteous man. In Jesus Christ, we are righteous. In Jesus Christ, none of ourselves. We have no righteousness to boast in outside of Jesus Christ. You are not a righteous man. In Jesus in Jesus Christ, we are saints. We are righteous people in Jesus Christ. We boast in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Exactly, but we are not Jesus Christ. But we are to we but we are to judge righteously and. And Christians are to judge sin when they see, especially on a, on a Christian campus. And I'll, I'll just, I'll just tell you, since I, it seems like your mom's not telling you, it's, it's a sexual immorality is a sin. The Bible says a sexual, the, those who are sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God. I know all of this. Like I said, I was raised Southern Baptist. Oh, by, by the way, I was not raised with any of this. You, you, you said, you know, okay, that well, those. I'm just letting you know that you're telling me things that I've been hearing since. I'm telling you things I never heard growing up. Period. So. Well, how did that happen? What's that? How did, coming into this faith? Well, God convicted me when I was roughly about 18. I um, started going to, to churches for the wrong reason. I had nothing better to do. I was invited, and I started to be convicted about my rock and roll music, my sexual morality, the pornography, video games, all the all the trash on TV I was watching, my foul language. I stopped cursing, um, and I started to pray for the first time in my life. I started to pray before meals and in general. I started to read the God. I, I dusted off the the. I shook the dust off my Bible and started to read it for the first time in a long time, and really for the first time ever. And God changed me. He gave me a hatred of my sin, and as He sanctified me over the years, I grew a, a hatred for the sins that were, are destroying this culture, and and I grew to become more sensitive and hate my sin more and more. Not living in sin, but realizing that when I did sin, that. I, I hate this and I must repent of this. Mm -hmm. And even when I dropped, you know, when a foul word would, would come out of my mouth over the years, not as a practice, it would, just, it would slip, I would immediately repent. Mm -hmm. And I no longer curse. I'm the only person in my immediate family who does not curse at all anymore. And 
not, I'm not lifting myself up. That's God's grace and mercy upon this former sinner who's now a saint by God's grace. And that whether you're, you're living in homosexual perversion, whether a guy's sleeping with his girlfriend, using birth control pills, whatever the case is, the guy who said earlier, yeah, that, that, that's sinful too. God condemns home birth control pills. Um, I can show you in the Bible where, um, yeah, there, that, it's all evil. It's, it's all, it all comes from a mindset that children are not a blessing. They're not, they're a curse and we need to avoid children. They're a burden, they're a curse. Yeah, it does. Yeah, people don't put condoms on because they want children. They put a condom on because they don't want children. They want sexual immorality. They want to sleep with their boyfriend or girlfriend, but they, well, the guy, he wants to sleep with his girlfriend and he, he doesn't want kids. He, he wants sex, but he doesn't want the responsibility that comes along with kids being created. That's a, that's a selfish little boy. We do, we do teach that, yes. And, you know, it's not unrealistic at all. It's what the Bible teaches. It's, it's, and this, and this well, it should not, especially at a, at a, I keep saying this, at this Christian college, quote unquote, Christian college, how would that be unrealistic? I mean, aren't they teaching that here on this campus? In the way. They're not? He will judge. What are they teaching at this Christian campus then? The world. They're going to be teaching as abstinence. At a Christian college, I would think so. Why? Because they say they're Christians. Do you go to a university? I, have I, you gone to a university? Yeah, yeah, I have a Christian school. And they taught us these things. Are, what, are, what are they teaching you here? To, it's okay to live in sin? Live like a devil? And we're Christians? What are they teaching you here? Again. Oh, no, do you, what do they, they are they do you read the Bible here? Do they have, do they have chapel here? What are they teaching you? What are they teaching you? Living sins? What do you think that I'm being taught here at a college university? Well, apparently you're being taught it's okay to live in sexual morality. University does not mean that God is going to be input into every single classroom for every single. Well, actually, yes, it does. <laughs> it, it does. Otherwise, why is it a Christian? Ca it's not a Christian campus, right? Yeah, it's all about Jesus Christ. It's a, if it's a public university, then yeah, they're not going to have Jesus Christ anywhere. But at a Christian school. He was at Bob Jones University where I went. He was there. I know. I can tell the behavior. I, I can the behavior, and it's filthy. And I'm, the behavior is filthy. It's evil. It's worldly. And I, I'm just. I'm just. That's what God. Just read the Bible, man. Do, 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 do you read? Do you read the Bible? Do you, do you read the Bible, man? So I'm just giving you what the Bible says. Well, look at what God says in His Word. Right, do you do that? I don't. I'm not a Christian. I, I thought you said you already were. You, you, okay. I was. You were, okay. I was raised. Okay. And that was all I was supposed to. And then I decided to actually live for myself. You know? Live for yourself? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's my choice, you know. Yeah. And if I end up in the fiery pits of hell when I die, then so be it. That's on me. Is your mom comfortable with you dying and going to hell? If that's where you go, you know. So far, you said you said she's a well, she's a Christian. She's not comfortable with that. She she's gonna love you and warn you. Um, it's it's fine. I don't, but I okay. I, I have parents and I've warned them about hell. And they profess to be Christians. I've warned them out of love for their souls. And I it wasn't it's comfortable. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's, um, well, it's just, it's very hard. Like whether you're warning your children or you're warning your parents, it, I didn't want to do it, but I did it. Cause it's like, if I love my parents, my family, I'm going to warn them, forget about what I don't want to do or want to do. I must warn them because I don't want them to die and go to hell. And now I strive to pray for them every day, but we, but we, but the right, but the right. Yeah. Everyone has gone through different journeys in life. So it's not about your feelings. It's about what God says it's in His in Word. Your heart. It's, it's your relationship with God. Can I tell you that, what? That's all that it comes down to at the end of the can day. I, no, no, well, can I tell you what the Bible says about the human heart? What? Um, that, sure, go ahead. Well, I mean, you, I, I think you would care because you're at a Christ, so called Christian school. I don't really, but you can. Well, then why are you at the school? Um, I told you earlier because my mom works there. I get free tuition. Okay, I'm very well. blessed to be going here. Um, but the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, that the heart is deceitful and desperately sick. Who can know it? The fool trusts in his own heart. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes. So when, when you trust in your own heart, go by your feelings. The Bible says you're a fool. And you're trusting in that which is deceitful and desperately sick that, that no one can know it. And so we must trust in the Lord. And depart, depart from sin. 
The Bible says the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. I know you said you're not a Christian, but I'm saying that this so-called Christian school, they should be teaching that, that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Teaching us that did not. And the fear of man is a snare that leads to death. And so, I mean, I, that's, now, I mean, what you're telling me about the school is not real surprising. It's, so now I'm wondering, okay, does anyone here read the Bible? Because... I mean, a few people seem to, because I've, I've met some Christians out here. Well, but like I, like I told you, like majority of people here, and I can I tell you that because mm -hmm. I actually do go here. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, a majority are Christians. Right. Are Christians. No, I can't. And I cannot tell. I understand. <laughs> I can't tell at all from their wicked behavior. Time, you know, everybody grows up, and even if you know, out of a hundred Christians, you're going to have so many that are grew up in different churches, different, different yeah. denominations, things like that. That have, you know cause them to respond and act and go about their day differently, you know, that doesn't mean, I mean, someone grew up What? I grew up as a pagan in, in the public school system in front of a TV, playing video games, listening to rock and roll, looking at porn. That's how I grew up and then God saved me. And God can save you too. I don't know your name. You, uh, my name is Nicholas. I, um, but I, I, I care about you, and I and I want you to join us in heaven. But you got to turn from not just from homosexuality, but from all your sin. All your sin. Is very not about that. I'm telling you right now, from first hand experience, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. your approach, what you guys are doing. Yeah. Again, like what is your? Well, you said that didn't bother you, so. Right, but it's not going to make me want to get down on my knees and repent. You know, so again. But it it, it caused you to come and talk to, talk to us, right? Initial, well, you approached me. Yeah, I mean, because you're looking at the sign, you were oh, you're you were open. So people are open. Right, right, right. But again, like I, my first thing, mm -hmm. what, what is your initial purpose of doing this and being here? Your sole purpose. Well, our number one reason, our sole purpose, is to glorify God. This is this is taking attention on abortion, not God. Well, because this this is our national sin. This is an indictment against this guilty culture that's soaked in innocent blood that won't repent. The, this, more than anything else, should tell people that we have sinned against the Holy God and we need to repent of this evil. Not just this, but, and we do preach against this. We've been preaching this like since we've been out here, against homosexual perversion, sexual morality, not, not just homosexual sleeping together, but men and women fornicating and using birth control pills, using condoms, and look, guys and, and women and looking at porn and and getting drunk getting high and all these sins that people are living in and the sin of sensuality where you just live for the things of the world and, and you know forget God and and the, and the Bible condemns these things in Galatians chapter 5 where drunkenness uh, sexual morality and many other things um, though they will not inherit the kingdom of God and the fruits of the spirit are love joy peace patience, um, long-suffering, um, among, among others. And um, so, I mean, and, and we... Can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, so how successful have you guys been out here on, you know, really having good, solid conversations, turning people to God, you know, all that? How, what's, like, the rate of that that you guys get out I don't really, I don't really pay attention to the rate. I, I just strive to obey God and give people the gospel, how they respond. I don't look at numbers. I don't... Were murdered, put death and all the ones were murdered. John, he was thrown in a vat of burning oil and banished to the island of Patmos. So it's, I mean, how they respond today, it's no different than the Old Testament than the New Testament. It's the same per opposition. Per I mean, this is not really persecution, but it's the same hatred and opposition. They're not killing us yet, but they're they are uh, opposing it, and so I mean. We, I, I believe I can say of my brother Alan that we, we look at success that did we preach the gospel faithfully? Did we glorify God? If so, we it, it was successful even if nobody listened, if they all mocked it, whatever whatever the response is, whether a thousand people get saved or nobody gets saved, 
If we proclaim the gospel faithfully and please God, honor God, glorify Him, we've done our job. And and we're and we're and we um, and that's that, that that's what our purpose is here. It seems like your purpose is for shock value. And I, mean, well, I feel like yeah. I feel like if these signs out here, that's showing me, okay, you guys want attention, you want people being all confused and like what what going on mm -hmm. and you kind of i feel like you want that kind of aggression kind of i mean people can think what they want but we're putting this on display because um again christian university professing christian university um i'd say most people here are lost and you're one of them you need jesus christ and i say that in love and law um there's been things done out here that we can't repeat um, a sexual gesture that a guy did earlier i didn't see it but my brother solid and he said he couldn't repeat what the guy just did so i mean people here need jesus christ that's why we come here because even at a, yeah, yeah. magnifying him talking making much of him our savior our lord our god no, that's what they said to the prophets in the Old Testament. That's what they said to the, to the disciples. Right. That's what they said to Jesus Christ Himself. Yeah. Like, go away, leave us alone. We're gonna murder you, and they did murder them. And and, and I think in, in, in the in the and book you guys of Jer. Like okay, we got. You know? Well, you don't know that. You know, you're, you're making know. an assumption there. You don't know that. Man. You don't know that. Babies get saved through these signs. And people are convicted How of sin. I can't tell you. I know that many babies have been saved. I don't know the number. Many babies have been saved How? by the. How does that work? Because mothers and fathers who see these signs. What do fathers have to do with saving babies? They can't have babies. Well, it takes two to create a baby. Yeah, yeah. but it takes the woman to either choose to get an abortion. Or to and and the father can can encourage her not to. Oh, he, he does. It, it, if it takes two to create a baby, it, and it takes two to, to love that baby, it's not just the woman's choice, it's the right. father that should step up. This Christian, this Christian university should, should have told you that, but I guess they failed. Yeah, because so. when we're here at a college university, we're here to learn really? They you know you had a you had a class out here that came out to say nothing but the blood of Jesus yesterday, right here on that on the steps right there. Right. Yeah. But I mean, this is a college before church. Yes, it is a Christian really? university. They don't. What, what do they live for here? We are paying thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars not to just go to a fancy church. Mm -hmm. We are coming here to get education, you know? So at the end of the day, you can't automatically assume, oh, just because it's Christian. You know? I mean, it's like everybody's well, I'm not, because I've because i I've been preaching long enough. Right, that I, but you said that you would assume. You well, I, I would, I would, well, I'm, I'm saying that kind of sarcastic. No, I, well, I'm, I'm saying common sense would tell you that, that that's what I mean, is common sense would tell me. I cur yeah, well, because like I said earlier, you got people here on athlete scholarships. Yeah. looking at one certain aspect of something because then that again is kind of that close mindedness and automatically not letting you be open to actually understanding in depth more about what's actually going on here, you know well i know what's going on here i've seen it i know it's, it's and right. but, but let me pretty you, much at every college campus uh i mean yeah, it's i mean have you gone anywhere that's not like this if not worse, you know? I've actually had better experiences at, at secular public universities that didn't claim to be Christian. Where? Well, let me tell you, um, Missouri State University, that okay. the response there I don't think was as filthy. Um, it, uh, Mississippi State, eh, that, eh, that may have been as filthy, maybe more, but I, I've been to other universities, like there was one in Texas where the response wasn't as filthy. But, I mean, I've but um like it, i mean they have chapel here right yeah. do they open it's mandatory. they open Testament, they open the bible and read it to you so do they read about all like all the sins that, that the bible condemns and no. what the bible what god says about because a lot of people here they don't really care about that that's not so what do, so what do they read in the bible then what do they read to you do they preach the gospel well, i mean not really it's more just kind of just i speak after the manner of men flesh so what's the point of going to chapel if I mean like it's mandatory to graduate? <laughs> I mean, I mean, sounds like I'm it's kind of a pointless. Ask, you know, I didn't yeah. create the course. I don't yeah. really know. You know.
Do they do they read the Bible and pray in class here? So it's college campus and um, and um, it's Christian in name only is basically what you're telling me. I mean, I already know that by now, but that's what you're. Okay, yeah, it's. Um, I mean, I I pretty much figured that before I came here the first time, but it, it confirmed to me. What did you think about that? I figured it's Christian in name only, just like most of the churches I've been to. That that I didn't. So then why were you so shocked and surprised by the? Oh, oh, I wasn't shocked. I was. I, I've not been. I, I wasn't um, surprised. Maybe slightly, maybe, but What's no. The difference between shock and surprise? Um, like I, um, I mean, it may have, it may not have been exactly what I expected, but I, I expected there to be a lot of sin and worldliness here. Okay, you had a but, um, I mean, yeah, I've been to churches where they, where they behave like, like pagans, you know, baby murderous homosexuals. Well, you're either a pagan or a Christian. A pagan or a Christian. There's, there's, two, there's only two sides to that. You're either lost or you're a saint. You're either a sinner or you're a saint. So paganism that, uh, is the only other thing besides Christian. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Also, you're, or a sinner or, or a saint. So are you I mean, uh, every other religion that has ever existed? Yeah, much? except for Jesus Christ. Uh, let, let me, let me, and they should be teaching you, you this here. I'm just telling you the truth. Did Jesus? Do you understand, like outwardly, because there are some people that you know are Buddhist. Yeah, they need, they need the and truth. They, and they are just as devout as you are to their religion. Devout to a false god. But not to them. They think that you're yeah, not a false god. You know? yeah. So it's just to have that. You would do a lot harder if you just had that open mind. Well, that. I got to tell people the truth. That's loving. Well, let, 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 me, let me tell you what Jesus Christ said. Go ahead. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus Christ said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. In the book of Acts, God says, For there's no other way, no other name under heaven by which man can be saved. So Jesus Christ did not leave room for another God or a false God. He, it's me. I said the one way. So there's one way to go to heaven through Jesus Christ. If people reject him, then then they're rejecting the one way to get to be saved of their sins. And it's loving to tell people that what's hateful is to comfort people in their sin, which is what, ha what it looks like it's happening here. And I'm, I'm sorry that, they, that you've been comforted in your sin here. That it grieves me that it sounds like your mom's comforting you in, in her sin. It grieves me. But oh, 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 I, I, I'm, but you're my neighbor. You're my neighbor, and your your mom's my neighbor. I don't know her. Very basic Yeah, you're my neighbor, and I care about you. And and in order to love you, I must, as my neighbor, I must um, tell you what the Bible says about homosexual sin and all sin, all sin. Right, but do you not already assume that I know that? Well, if you um. Well, maybe you didn't know that. That's why I'm giving you scripture, because maybe you don't know that. So you thought I didn't know that? I don't know. You said they don't really take the Bible seriously here, basically, that they don't really read it. I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but so maybe you don't know these things. I didn't used to know this, these things until I looked at God's Word. But I, I just encourage you to look to God's Word. Don't look to your own opinion. Don't even look to just what your mom says or your dad says. Or anyone, the faculty here, say, look to God's Word. God will never let you down. I'll let you down. Your parents will let you down. They will let you down here, and they have let you down. I'm sorry about that, but Jesus Christ will never let you down. Okay. But you must turn from sin. Again, you don't have to talk about my mother and her parenting. You don't have to talk about that. I'm just talking. disrespectful. I'm saying this as respectfully as I can. No, 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 I understand. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah. From my perspective, a uh, homosexual, non-Christian, uh, very out and proud. Um, you're on a Christian campus. You're not really getting it. With what you're uh, that, that, that's your opinion. To try and speak to people and to try and get them to see. I'm letting you know firsthand. It, I mean, it's just like it's, it's a little pointless. It feels like to me okay. on my end, but I mean, you know. We just give you the truth. If people reject it, that's no, up to them. That's their choice. But I mean, it's just like it's also important, like I said, to just you don't have to believe what someone else says if you don't agree with it. But at the same time. You can be open. You can under. You can try to understand it. You can try and see where they're coming from. That's a big thing that I've learned. You know, is I'm very respectful of everyone in religion. Yeah. Yes. That. Thank you. Thank you. But at the same time, because I put myself in their shoes, because I've lived through that, I know what it's like to be 
grown up in something and not really be able to look and see what anything else in the world is going on. You know, I, I get that. I understand that. That's why, you know, I feel like it's very important when you are having these discussions to just... See her? Okay, so God commands... You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? Are you catching what I'm... Kind of, yeah. It, um, yeah, we... Um, I think it did, I think I already gave you Proverbs 27. Better is open rebuke. I can't really remember. Well, let me let me tell you again. Okay. Better is open. Re this is Proverbs 27. Right. Better is open rebuke than love that is concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. And so, this, well, it, it it means that it is it is better to rebuke someone in their sin than to than to give give them a false love. And so in love by like it's okay to live in that sin. God, God understands. And faithful are the wounds of a friend. To, they, these are many wounds that that we're providing here um, in our time here is to bring the gospel into conflict with the culture of sin, sex, and death. And that and that hurts people when they have their sin confronted with the gospel. That's a wound. That's a wound of a friend. Faithful are the kisses of an enemy. Um, or um, sorry, faith of. Um, let me. Uh, better is open rebuke than love that is concealed. Um, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. So what what I see here is the enemy is um, kiss, uh, providing not not literally, but providing kisses to people um, by telling them my, by not confronting them in their sin, giving them, giving them lies. I mean, this campus appears to be full of lies that people can live openly in sin. Well. Well, that's what I'm talking about. It's yeah. if it's not of God, it's a lie. People that are—I've already uh, told you about all the things I've seen on this campus, or many of the things. Uh -huh. These are just lies of the devil. Have you got oh, five, six years? Ago. Yeah. I mean, in it, I tell you. I mean, I think I've—I've. I've, um, well, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. I mean, it's right, right. you know, but again, there are it's not my standards. The Bible that you know cannot be taken literally, and when you do take them literally, it takes away the true meaning and context of that. You're aware of that, correct? There, are, yeah, there are things. Right. That, there are things in the Bible that right. that God has like um, exaggeration or allegorically, and it takes discernment of the person that God has saved to understand that, not to rip it out of context to justify sin, exactly. but to understand what God is saying because He had a specific audience for different books um of the bible the different books of the bible and um and so but that but that's that, that's why we're here because there are sinners everywhere there's heterosexuals living in sin sleeping with their boyfriend or girlfriend people getting divorced babies being murdered drunkenness pornography everywhere adultery everywhere and and we go to um people ask why you have this christian yeah, that? yeah. Preach like, against it. Yeah, talk to people individually. Give li talking? Give you actually like, are you a part of anything? I like I you know, trying to actually yep. stop something, you know, besides just talking. You well, know? we go to the murder mills to try and, and rescue babies from being murdered. Murder mills? Abortion mills. They're, they're murder mills. Child sacrifice centers. Abortion clinics? I don't call them clinics because they're, they're, they're death camps. But that is what you're referring to. Yeah, okay. it's clinic, but I don't call death camps clinics. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, what do you think about um, is revealed you know, with from heaven? When it I'll say what God says. God says you shall not murder. I'm, I'm answering your question. I'm answering your question. God says you shall not murder. The sixth commandment written on your heart. It's the sixth commandment of the law of God says you shall not murder. That, that should answer the question right there. So we don't murder people. Right? We don't murder people. What if it's the invisible thing? The creation of the world are clearly seen unless it is taken out being understood by the things that are made. Well, from from what I've been told from medical experts, doctors, OBGYNs, there's never any reason to murder a baby. You can deliver the child. If the child's or if the child's going to die. That's uh, God is the author of life. He has the right to take that child's life. Deliver the child. Don't intentionally murder the child. There's never any reason. You cannot save a mother's life by murdering her baby. That is a That's not abortion. That's delivering a child 
alive or dead. And we shouldn't murder people. It doesn't make sense to, okay, I'm going to murder your baby to save your life. That doesn't make sense. Well, so several, several doctors, several experts, I, I can't give you their names off the top of my head, but they, 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 they've, they've, they've made these statements that I've, I've seen um, online one and also others I've, I've said, who said this and, um, and uh, the, the former Sur Surgeon General of America, Attorney Surgeon General C. Everett Koop, he said, in 36 years of pediatric surgery, I have never known of one instance where a baby had to be murdered to save the mother's life. Not one instance. So that, that's one. You can look that up if you wish to. Have you, like, looked into complications pregnancy and A little bit. There are, there are those cases. And well, what I'm saying is a case where a baby had to be murdered. I'm saying there are cases where the baby, the baby is going to die. But let the baby not die because we intervene and murder the baby. Let the, let the baby die. And he has the right to do that. He is the author of life. Well, so the vast difference. And I mean, I, I disagree with some of the wars this country is conducted in. Um, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't researched it a lot. Oh, hold, hold on, hold, hold on, hold on, oh, hold on, hold, before you make accusations, just hold on, <laughs> deep breath. This is, this is a war on babies in the womb happening right here in our country. And yes, our country has engaged in many wars that are unjust. I can't speak much about that because I haven't researched it a ton. But, it, yeah, babies are, people are dying in our country. Babies are being mass murdered and nobody cares. What I'm saying is, well, there's a lot of people on this campus. That, yeah, I, I do, but but you're you're failing to see that the, the gravity that thousands of babies are mass murdered every single day, not in a foreign country, but in this country, in this country. Yeah, that this country engages in unjust wars and murders people. Well, when you murder people, no, it was a cop out for most professing Christians because they couldn't care less. And we're doing this because because they're not saved. I say because they're not saved. Yeah, God, God is not causing them to be. They have not been saved. If they're saved, they would care. If they're saved, they stop dressing like this. That is, because I mean, I'm, I, you look around. You look around and you see people. Well, not not because I want to see a woman's breast hanging out, but because you know, I observe things. Not as a, not as, not as a Christian. Well, if you stop dressing like if you stop dressing like the world. Okay, that's fine. Where you can wear that. That's not I don't want to go into that. But it's not just like the devil, just like the world. But that, but that's. Um, dressing like the world. And you're justifying dressing like the world. Well, I guess that makes sense because you're not a Christian, right? You said you're a homosexual, not a Christian. No, no, Christian, Christians fear God. I'm a person who, who fears God, who's a Christian. Uh, I want to. I just want to encourage you to exam to trust in Jesus Christ. Oh, you need. But you need. Hard to hard against the gospel. It says. Wherefore, seeing we have received this kingdom, I have enjoyed this conversation. You know, um, I did appreciate it. Because again, I like to hear people's perspectives. Look to what God says in His Word. That's the perspective. That's what he says should be what, what you're concerned with. Read the Bible, man. Read the Bible. Yes, thank you for the conversation. Thank you.